So I heard this week that uh, you're not supposed to have coffee after 12 p.m. because it stays in your body for 10 to 12 hours. So it's uh, 4 p.m. and I'm having coffee. Yeah, I learned a lot from that article. <sighs> so one day I'm scrolling through the comments and I see this. Future video best commenter tips edition by the, the prof Nolan. The professor, are you a professor? And if 11 thumbs up wasn't sign enough that we should do this video, I just... You guys are always leaving such smart, unique comments on these videos, so why in the world wouldn't we highlight your brilliance and creativity? I'll tell you why. Um, because the prof Nolan thought of it. <laughs> it was not my idea. Thanks, Noel. M V. Anyway, let's dive in. First step, on my most recent video using scheduled transactions in YNAB, a few of you shared that you schedule moneyless transactions as reminders to do other things. What? Uh, what does that mean, Hannah? Let me explain. First, Harrison Spain mentions that he schedules transactions for zero dollars so that when it rolls into his budget, he can fill in the dollar amount later, like whenever he knows what the dollar amount is. Okay, that's brilliant. Nine thumbs up. Yeah, way to go, Harry. Then James Barasa just slides into the conversation with next level financial reminders. For example, confirm interest accrual on student loans. Or remember to change the goal amount on your rent category because rent is bumping up next month. Then Jennifer Gunter pops in here and just drops a little cherry on top with these extra adulty non-budget related ideas, such as reminding yourself to schedule a doctor's appointment or an oil change in YNAB. I love the creativity, the ingenuity. Is that a word? I feel like that's a word. Talk about a hack though, right? Budgeting doesn't just help you get your finances together, it helps you get your life together. You can schedule a transaction for zero dollars, cancel your free trial for this app before you're charged tomorrow, or maybe a schedule boarding reservation for dog for New York City trip. All those little things that we just forget to do. Or we're afraid they're gonna slip our minds, so why not give ourselves an extra reminder in our budget? Especially if you're someone that checks your budget like five times a day. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> that would be really lame. <clears throat> Our second tip came from a little tag team, Priscilla Davis and Paige Atkins on the eight ways to use flags in YNAB video. Priscilla says, and I quote, I use flags to track our respective car expenses. So blue for his car, purple for mine. You can track repairs and maintenance and gas usage and tolls, which is actually really smart because you can spot whether or not a car is really performing as it should, or if it's maybe time to move on and start looking for a new car. For instance, if you have a little green car that needs its oil changed more than twice as much as your little blue car, I don't know why they're little, but maybe it's, you know, maybe little green cars seen better days and it's time to right off into the sunset, if you know what I mean. Close its little car eyes. Maybe it helps you realize, wow, we've put over $3,000 in repairs on little green car. I don't know, bud. And Paige slipped in with the exact same idea, but just a little more detail. In their family, they flag one car with yellow flags and another car with blue flags. And she actually said they also do this with things like coffee. That way we can see if someone's caffeinating more than the other. So we've got to keep things even Stevens. So I just love that this gives you a bird's eye view of how your cars are doing and what they're running you money wise. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. The third tip is actually not from the YouTube comments, but well, we're breaking rules, but it's from a guest writer on one of our most recent blog posts titled five tips for high income earners using YNAB. Now don't let the title deceive you. This tip has nothing to do with making or having lots of money. This tip comes to you from Ivan Smirnov and involves another way to categorize and group your transactions in your budget. He says, and I quote, there are three ways to slice transaction data. 
slice. You can slice by payee, category, or hashtags. The example he gives from his own budget is whenever he's entering a plane ticket purchase as a transaction in his budget, he types hashtag airfare into the memo line. Then when he wants to know how much he spent on airfare in 2019, he searches hashtag airfare, categorizes it by 2019, and then he knows exactly how often he's been faring the air. Bada bing, bada boom. I don't know how much anyone fared the air this year, but you know, okay. This is brilliant because if you want to use flags, but maybe have a hard time remembering what the flag colors mean that you assign to certain things, this has actual words and there's no limit. You can use as many hashtags as you want. That being said though, just make sure that you have a solid system for your hashtags. You know which ones you're actively using and you know how you're gonna spell it. Because if you use hashtag vacation and hashtag vacations and you search hashtag vacations in the search bar, then hashtag vacation is not gonna come up. Does that make sense? It might be a good idea to write them down somewhere just so that you have a key somewhere. This could be a great opportunity for you to utilize the notes in your budget. You can also use multiple hashtags in one memo if you want. So that transaction can be grouped in a multitude of ways. Last reason to use hashtags is um, they're cool. Uh, yeah. Hashtag right. If you'd like another demonstration of how this tip can be used, Ivan was actually not the first one to think of it. Mark, a beloved past YNAB team member, actually wrote a blog about how he uses hashtags to categorize his family vacations. And this blog was written back in 2013, which sounds like it was yesterday, but was the year Disney's Frozen was fresh in the movie theaters and the Harlem Shake was taking over YouTube. Does, does anyone? remember what the Harlem Shake was. Seriously though, check out what YNAB looked like back then. I mean, 2013 was not yesterday. Our fourth YouTube commenter tip comes from the three ways to enter spending in YNAB video, and we have the brilliant Wart 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 coming in with some speedy transaction entering shortcuts for us. He says that he has to pay for parking quite a lot. I'd assume probably for his job. To speed things up on my iPhone, I built a Siri shortcut that enters the right payee, amount, category, and date at the press of a little button. Word, you're a genius. Just gonna be honest with you guys, I don't know how to do that, but Wart says it's possible, and it's not only him, because Vanessa Shwee, Vanessa Schwez, Vanessa Schwez, it. Vanessa S says that she has set up text alerts to her phone so that whenever she swipes her credit card or her debit card, it sends a text right to her phone. Then she can immediately enter that transaction into YNAB and have a record of all of her transactions in one place. Vanessa sounds like she is not carrying around a purse full of receipts. And Vanessa is saving the earth. Way to go, one tree at a time. I'm not a Siri pro, but I will try to link below how you can set up a Siri shortcut on your phone. As for setting up text alerts to your phone whenever you swipe a card, that is based on your bank or your specific credit card company, so give them a call and see what they can do for you. But handy tips, really love that. And our fifth and final YouTube commenter tip today was from the My 5 YNAB Beginner Mistakes video and is from a YNABber named Scorpion UK or Scorpion Knock. That's probably not her birth name, but I don't know. At the end of that video, I gave a bonus tip where I break down the fixed versus flexi category group structure. This structure is where you take all the categories in your budget that have fixed, predictable, consistent expenses like maybe your rent or your renter's insurance or your Netflix subscription because it costs the same every time and it's due on the same day every time. On the category line, I like to add the day it's due and the amount that's due. Put them all in order so that you can prioritize what expenses you need to pay off first. And that is your fixed category group. And then the flexi category group is where you put all your categories where the amount that you're gonna spend out of it every month changes and there's no specific due date. For example, groceries or clothing or a vet fund. 
The reason these are in our flexi category group is because these are the categories that we can confidently borrow money from whenever we need to roll with the punches. Because if you need to pay $1,000 in rent every month, you can't borrow from your $1,000 that you put aside for rent. But if you needed to find $30 somewhere in your budget, you probably could find a way to take it from clothing or take it from groceries or take it from the vet fund because those don't have specific due dates and you can kind of ebb and flow each month on how much you actually need in that category. But back to Scorpion UK, she says she collapses the fixed category group so that she's not tempted to borrow any money from those categories. But here's where the pro tip comes in. I've always kept the fixed category group at the top of my budget. She actually puts it at the bottom because guess what? It takes away even more temptation to borrow money from those categories that you really should not be borrowing from. This also means that the flexi categories appear first on all of the drop down lists. So for example, if she overspent in a category and clicks that red overspent number, it gives you that little drop down menu of all the categories you can borrow money from. And the very first ones it shows her are all of her flexi categories that she probably can borrow money from. Which is really brilliant because I always have to scroll past all of my many fixed expenses in order to get to my flexi category and see where I can borrow money from. So thanks Scorpion UK, you changed my budget. I'm bumping fixed expenses to the bottom, the booty of my budget. She does say that the only thing she has to do differently is when she gets paid, she kind of has to drop down in her budget and fill those fixed expenses first and then hop back up to the top and start popping in extra money where she can into her flexi categories. I really love that tip and I'm super excited to apply it to my budget, which just makes me wanna say, I had a total blast this week reading through all of your past comments and they're so kind and inspiring and smart and creative. If it weren't for Scorpion UK, I would be scrolling past all my fixed expenses for the rest of my life whenever I try to move money. We will never cease to encourage you to share what works best for you so that you can help other YNABbers and other budgeters find success. Ah, it just makes you feel good. If you enjoyed this style of video, please let me know and I will keep tucking away my favorite comments and tips that I see from you guys so that we can do a round two of YouTube commenter tips. Until then, keep being brilliant, keep inspiring those around you and keep budgeting like the boss you are. See you next time. I'm so glad other people are smart. And then we have little Jennifer, uh, no, she's not little. Also, this can just help you track your gas usage per car way more easily. Or <laughs> Why is it so hard to get the lines out of my face? I think we did it, girl.